Hi everyone, I'm going to give you an overview um, for the Beaches and Dunes indicator revisions process before the call here. We start with the mission of your cooperative as, as usual, and that's to create the shared blueprint for conservation actions uh, for natural and cultural resources. So this is really visioning, okay, what explicitly do we want the conservation future of the South Atlantic region to look like? Um, how are we going to get there? As far as steps in the blueprint, we've now made it all the way through the the first three steps and we're moving back up to the beginning again and uh, the overall cycle. Um, so we've gone through originally selecting indicators all the way to now developing a version 1.0 of the conservation blueprint which is now out. Um, and so now we're cycling back to our, our indicators and as per the testing and revision process uh, we're re revisiting all of them and, and making any tweaks that are needed. Reminder about the broad goals of your cooperative. So we've got the natural, the cultural, and the socioeconomic. Uh, for the beaches and dunes ecosystem, it's going to be focused on the natural resources. And this is really all about the integrity of ecological systems. Uh, so that's the, the, the key goal here and what these indicators should be adding up to. Uh, there's also a caveat early in the process that viability of certain key species, um, if, if integrity is not enough, we may need to revisit the need for putting in uh, certain key species, but uh, we're not at that point yet, so right now it's all about um, ecological integrity. And that integrity is, is measured in each of these different ecosystems, uh, which beaches and dunes is, is one of them. So each of them has three or less uh, indicators that were, when added up, uh, provide the, that measure of integrity. For those that weren't involved in the original indicator selection process, um, so some of you may have been, some of you haven't, um, basically that was resulted from detailed input from a whole bunch of experts in different ecological systems and including folks from all of the adjacent LCCs. Um, so a lot of sort of thinking about um, how to measure these different pieces and ended with the integration of feedback with, by a 20 member indicator revision team or indicator selection team. So just a little background of where the original indicators came from. Now let's move right into the indicator testing so far. Um, so now we have a testing and revision process. We're cycling back and, and testing the different criteria used to select the indicators. And so for, for testing these indicators, we're using the three different types of criteria that were set forth in the indicator selection process. Um, so all of these set up some testable assumptions that we could go back to as a cooperative um, and then potentially revise if they fail to do what we all thought they would be doing. So there's the practical criteria. So this is all about, you know, can we actually monitor, can we actually model these things across the whole geography? Uh, the ecological criteria, so how well are they capturing the other components of the ecosystem um, you know, that's species, processes, habitats, those those kind of things. And then social criteria. So how does it resonate with the American public, with private land and water managers, with public land and water managers? Um, those kind of things. So after the selection, the original selection of the indicators, been working on all these different pieces. Uh, so for the practical criteria, it's been your staff here at the cooperative have been creating and or using existing GIS layers to depict the uh, indicators. So fairly simple, okay, we thought we could, the data were there and we could put it together, so let's go ahead and make the GIS layers and, and find out what we run into along the way. So that's been the testing so far, the practical criteria. Uh, the first cut of testing the ecological criteria uh, split up across three different teams, uh, depending on if we're talking about terrestrial, freshwater, or marine indicators. And for beaches and dunes, uh, that's on the terrestrial side. So that's Ricky White from NatureServe and Ashton Drew from NC State have been working on, on testing those and how well they capture other components of the ecosystem. And then we originally were going to hold off on the social criteria for a little bit, uh, but then uh, for a lucky accident, some master's uh, students down at Duke in survey class um, were able to, to actually take on some of the social criteria questions as well. So thanks to Randy Kramer, the faculty over there, that, that six some students on this question. All right, uh, so how well did the beaches and dunes indicators do on the practical criteria? So, you know, in this space, basically just can we model them with existing information? So first off, productivity of loggerhead sea turtles. So this was really to try to capture sort of the nest 
nest predator community and overall, you know, how well some of the beach nesting species might do. Um, so surprisingly, getting the productivity in a consistent way across the whole geography was a little harder than we thought. Um, so that actually, we failed to get the, the consistent productivity of sea turtles across the whole range. Um, but with a slight tweak looking at sort of number of nests, uh, that actually passes. So we managed to get number of nests across the whole geography, and those correlate very strongly with the overall productivity. We did some sort of looking across those two things in places where we had productivity data. So we made it through most, but uh, not all. Okay, index of beach birds. Um, so this is a, a collection of different um, beach nesting species, so piping plover, American oyster catcher, Wilson's plover, those kind of things. Um, and so that pass, we managed to get some decent um, information on on that through the range uh, for everything except for red knot. Uh, so that's so we're recommending we basically pull that one out for now until there's some some better data for for red knot. And in the last, the miles of altered beach. Um, so this was really trying to get at um, the overall alteration of the beach system. So bringing together things like shoreline alteration and jetties and groins and um, those kind of pieces. And so even early in the indicator process, we selected them. Some folks were saying, well, I think we can get this, but there may be some gaps or challenges. And so it turns out they were right. Um, so uh, that we got very close. We tested a whole bunch of different uh, data sets and options and pretty much all of them had some kind of gap where, you know, at least one state or one section, the data were more than you know, 10 years old or just didn't exist. Um, so really, we couldn't quite get it consistent across the whole geography. Um, but we do have an a potential alternative for that. So uh, that's the practical criteria for the three indicators. And so here are the proposed revisions. Um, so change the loggerhead sea turtle nest to just number of loggerhead sea turtle nests so we can get a hold of that across the whole geography. Uh, for the index of beach birds, keep it as it is except for remove red knot um, until those data are, are, um, are ready. And then for the miles of altered beach, um, trying to get at the same idea only from a slightly different angle, look at miles of wide beach. Um, so explored some different options here of how to capture the idea of that altered beach metric um, that we couldn't measure directly. And so thinking about, okay, well, what happens when you have a beach altered? You know, when you put in the jetties, when you harden the shoreline, you know, you basically lose your beach in a lot of cases. And so, um, you know, your beach gets narrows. And so um, we have a, a keeping it the same idea, but a slightly modified um, version of miles of wide beach trying to separate the wide beaches versus the more narrow beaches as the measure of alteration. So we'll talk more about that on the call. So where does that leave us with beach and dune integrity? Um, so here's their sort of integrity on the left and here's how it's going to be measured based on you know, if we keep these, these revisions happen as, as proposed. So the top three um, things on the right there, um, this low road density area, structural connectivity, and climate resilient biodiversity hotspots. Um, so these are all measures that come from the landscapes indicators. So the landscape indicators draped across all um, terrestrial habitat types. So we're, from the landscapes indicators, we get things like, you know, beaches that are already in lower row density areas, so sort of bigger patches of potentially natural habitat, structural connectivity. So this is connectivity, not from the perspective of individual species, but just from overall structural connectivity, how the, habit, how the habitats are connected. Um, so if it's part of a corridor or a hub, it gets, it will get captured in this structural connectivity measure. And then these climate resilient biodiversity hotspots, I sort of uh, probably won't actually really apply to the beaches and dunes system until some of the future modeling, because most of that is masked out uh, because of sea level rise. So the top three are come from the landscape indicators, and the bottom three are the ones we just talked about. So these come directly from the beaches and, and dunes indicators. So cedar turtle nests, index of beach birds, and the miles of wide beach. Um, so when we're calculating that the overall integrity of the system, um, you'll get all of those uh, coming together. 
Okay, so now on to the ecological criteria. I'm just going to talk about this one a little bit. Uh, so this is that question of are the indicators, rep how are they representing other species' ecological features? Um, and so the, what we've been doing is testing some of the second tier, quote unquote, indicators that came out of the indicator selection process. So these were measures that, you know, were, were recommended but didn't, um, for one reason or another, we couldn't monitor them across the whole range or, um, you know, they just, they didn't cover the whole range, various reasons why we couldn't use them as indicators. Um, and also things suggested by the web community. So if you remember a while back, we asked everyone on the terrestrial side, hey, is there other things that you'd like to see how well the indicators are working? Other things you care about in this system you'd like to see tested? Um, for most cases, the sampling is opportunistic, especially for species. Um, so oftentimes we have known locations, but can't say a lot beyond that. Um, but we really kind of look at, you know, sort of the overlap. How well are these things co-located with each other? And so all of this is going to be completed within the, the end of the year. But I'll give you a little bit of, um, of what some of the results are showing so far. Now, the way we're doing this is um, for the ecological criteria is you're looking for overlap. Like I said before, you know, are these things co-occurring? Um, and to high indicator values correspond to high values of the other ecosystem attributes. So this is kind of what it looks like. So that top graph over here, you know, a perfectly corresponding redundant capturing the same thing basically looks like this. You know, look at that red line. No relationship is going to be flat. And then a line going down, it shows that it's either a complementary or sort of contradictory indicator. So this is sort of saying, okay, this is saying something totally different than the indicator itself. So you can compare an indicator and these are the different relationships that they could have. So let's look at a couple of the results here real quick. Um, so this is sea turtle uh, nesting densities are looking at the sort of number of sea turtle nests. And so that's our top indicator we're looking at and then we're comparing them to a couple of other things. Um, so in this case, the beach bird index uh, so sea turtles and the beach bird index are capturing different things. So you see it's, the, the slope is going down pretty reasonably. It's a little noisy, but there's, there's definitely something different going on here. Um, and then also we have this density of sea oat. So this is just within the Carolinas based on point sampling data from the Carolina Vegetation Survey. Um, and not really much going on here as far as relationship between sea turtle nesting density and, and sea turtles. Here's another one. This is beach width. This is that new um, sort of uh, proposed modification for capturing the altered shoreline alteration piece. And so in this top right here, um, so it's working relatively well to capture the beach bird index, uh, which is kind of what you'd hope, sort of wider beaches, more, more beach birds. Um, so that's a good sign. Uh, capturing something different than sea turtle nesting density. So sea turtle nesting density going down, so it's capturing something else. Um, it's picking out places that tend to be farther away from urban land cover. So in this case, it's more than 400 meters away. Um, some kind of noisy relationships between sea oats, um, you know, slightly complementary, and then beaches and dunes vegetation the other way. Um, it's a little noisier sample size isn't particularly huge on some of these. Um, and the last one that's a little bit um, that's a little bit interesting is erosion class. Uh, and so this one's a little bit it makes it makes a lot of sense, but it's a little counterintuitive at first. Um, so we looked at erosion class, so how fast are these beaches eroding? Um, and so what you find is that um, basically wider beaches um, are eroding at a higher rate. See, this is why they're they're sort of going down. So it's capturing something different. It's not the they're not correlated more equals more. And so, we, but when we thought about and had some discussions about this sort of issue, you know, it, it does make logical sense in that these narrow beaches are not eroding a lot because they've pretty much already eroded most of what they can do. They're being renourished, but they're pretty hammered. So there's nowhere left for them to go. Whereas the wider beaches. Um, have a lot more ability to to potentially erode. Um, so that's that was a fairly interesting um, result on on sort of rates of erosion. So I know if that's a little bit confusing, that's okay. We can talk about it um, on the call as well. Now here's some other uh, another comparison looking within the bird index. So how well the say piping globers cover other 
um, species in the bird index to see if we're just all sort of correlated with each other. Uh, so the top line, these top two are um, looking at sort of the higher areas for piping clover density, and the bottom two are looking at just how well does presence predict what's going on. So within American oyster catcher, um, from the abundance side, there's really not much of a relationship between piping clover abundance and oyster catcher abundance. And then when you go to just overall occurrence, they're actually capturing different components of the system. So that's good. That's kind of what we hope when it, with a collection of different bird species. Um, and even within Wilson's plover, um, you know, you have a, a, an okay relationship here between them. Um, and here, just one last one with the bird index itself. Um, pretty noisy on how well the bird index is capturing sea oats. Uh, bird width, as we said before, is, is um, nicely correlated with it. Not many patterns with sea turtle density. Um, and, you know, seem to have some kind of, um, you know, complementary different different relationship than beach and dunes vegetation. Uh, but again, that's that data set is kind of noisy. All right, so that was just a quick overview we're finding so far on the ecological criteria testing. Uh, now I mentioned the social criteria. Uh, so this is some work that um, the students down at Duke did. And so they did uh, in-person intercept surveys across sort of a wide range of demographics and um, sort of social backgrounds. And so this is trying to get at, well, how well does these different things resonate with the American public? Uh, so these were where all the people came from. They did work in the, the uh, research triangle and also down near the coast. So you can see the clusters of of that. And so here's a, and one of the particularly applicable um, measures from here. So this is based on 110 responses. And this is looking at um, indicator selection by a willingness to donate money. So ask the question, would you rather donate money to nesting, support nesting sea turtles, beach dune habitat, or neither? Um, and, and so you can see it's not really a clear and cut case about you know, which of these indicators are, you know, is it the sort of habitat metrics or the species metrics, which ones are resonating more with, with folks. Uh, the gray also is a neither. People said, I don't want to give money to either. Uh, one last thing as far as just general intro information that was on people's minds. Uh, this is top five environmental issues folks felt were important. This had about 100 people. Um, and one of the things you'll, so you'll notice the not surprise, water pollution, water quality is very high on the list. Um, so, you know, basically 87% of the respondents thought that that was, you know, in their top five. Um, and air pollution and air quality was actually pretty strong, even a little stronger than I thought and some other folks thought might, uh, might come out. Um, again, only 100 people, so, um, you know, some of the small point differences aren't too big. Um, but you can kind of see exactly the, the, the issues that were on people's minds. Now, uh, so on to just revising the indicators and the overall process. Uh, here's a reminder of the monthly schedule here. So every month we're doing one to two ecosystems. So you know that because you're on the beaches and dunes uh, revision team. And the way this works is basically the beginning of the week, starting with the newsletter, we form some teams, send out potential uh, revisions for discussions and get the indicator models up on the planning atlas. Then around week three, week four, we get out some of the testing results, uh, set up some, have some team calls, and then have some dis additional discussion, final decisions by the team at the end of the month. And then there is a two week comment period that starts at the end of the month. Uh, so giving anyone an opportunity to sort of make comments on what the team's recommendations are. Um, and after those two weeks, we get the final steering committee approval and those are locked in for Blueprint 2.0. All right, so that's um, that's the overview there. I want to also show you real quickly. So here we are on the South Atlantic LCC website, um, and I want to show you where to get some more information on what I was talking about for the call. So let's go into indicators and help improve the indicators. Um, so you'll notice here under June, read the details on beaches and dunes indicator revisions. Um, so hopefully y'all have already taken a look at this, but if not, um, please look over some of the, the details we have here. Um, so now if you include this, we have the, the sort of overview, the testing of the different criteria, um, and some other details about what are the recommended changes, where can I get a hold of the GIS layers um, to look at. So this is all here. 
Um, so I'm going to mention two things about this real quick. For our sea turtle and index of each bird's data, uh, because of some data sharing um, concerns, at least for the next few months until some things get published, um, you'll have to go ahead and email Amy, so her contact information is right here, to get access to view um, the layers for the, the birds and the sea turtles. Um, and so just send her an email and then so she can get you up on the planning atlas with your account so you can view that. But we can't make that publicly available. Um, hopefully in the next few months we'll be able to get it out for everyone, but um, just for now you'll have to let Amy know. For the wide beach, um, we can make that one publicly available. So there's click here to view. You click on it here. Oops, we had just deleted that particular one. Um, so uh, let me go back and fix this here. We've been, we've been working on improving some of these different la layers in a second. So let me go ahead. So here's the backup version, just in case you ever get lost. Um, so we go back to the planning atlas. It's athleticlcc.database.org. You can always go to draft indicators for review and discussion. And so you can see some of the folders right down here. And so under beaches and dunes, um, so we've got wide beaches right here. So we'll click on this. Now you can see, okay, so here is the um, description. So wide beaches, reason for selection, targets, um, all the mapping steps. So you can go down to more. If you want to know all the gory GIS details, you can get in there and figure out exactly how this stuff was calculated. Um, so that's there. You can also open it in the map. And so then the layer is going to load up for you. Um, and so then you can zoom in and explore it as well if you want to go ahead and, and take a look. Anytime also if you want to go back, uh, there's this little arrow right here if you want to view the details about how the data set was, was originally formed. Um, so that is uh, how to get a hold of the information here and looking forward to talking with you soon on the call.